RoboCup Soccer, the Small Size League. The Small Size League was one of the earliest robot divisions developed by RoboCup. The interesting thing people sometimes ask is why robot soccer? You know, it's an interesting concept that we didn't kind of like particularly like soccer, maybe the whole world does, but what happens is that it was something we could do in our labs as a research environment. We did not go and started soccer in the grass field outside, but we generated this kind of prototypical version of soccer, the small size league, which in the beginning was set to start in a ping pong table. We selected these colored based walls, orange balls, yellow goals, blue goals, uniforms of specific colors, patterns on top of the small size, all sorts of like a definition of the soccer problem in a way that we actually could handle it in our labs. A soccer match in the small size league currently consists of two five robot teams. The game starts with a referee call the start game. Each team has five robots compete each other. The localization of the players is handled via an overhead camera and standardized marking patterns. The robots are required to have a dot pattern that looks like this. The center color determines the team. It's either yellow or blue. And then depending on the colors here, it determines the robot ID number. So the camera above is, the field sees these um, and sends the information to the team computers about where each of the robots are. The solution of providing a centralized localization system gave teams a leg up in exploring many of the other difficulties encountered in creating realistic robotic soccer players. The small size robots, at the beginning we, it was only three robots, again three robots, but it gave us the chance that league with overhead perception, so no distributed perception, but completely centralized and centralized reasoning also, gave us a chance of trying for the first time the challenges of the real world. The challenges of actually detecting a ball, handling different lighting conditions, the speeds, moving objects, the opponent's blocking, uh, obstacle avoidance, all of these uh, computed at the centralized level. Play is controlled by a human referee sending signals to a central computer. The game will continue, continue until uh, we pass 10 minutes. And other, after 10 minutes, we will be break for 5 minutes. Each team can come and pick, uh, do something with the robot, like uh, check the robot, change the battery and everything. And after that, the game will continue to the second half for 10 minutes. And who can score the most win that match. So we started without humanoids. We started with only wheeled robots that back in the 90s, that's what was available. And that's what we felt comfortable in, in building ourselves. Here's our robot. So let me tell you a little bit about how it works. There's a maximum diameter for these and a maximum height. We have these four Omni wheels here. Most teams, maybe all teams on the in the small size league, use a special uh, wheels called omnidirectional wheels. And if you look at them closely, uh, their wheels composed of smaller wheels. It turns out that if you spin all four wheels in just the right way, you can cause the robot to turn at any rate and drive in any direction, any arbitrary direction. The small size robots also usually have two other important components on board. One is a, they call it a dribbler bar. It's a, it's a little cylinder that spins really fast. And it's broken in the middle here so that it centers the ball. And when it touches the soccer ball, it causes the soccer ball to spin into the robot. And that means the robot can have very positive control over the, over the ball. And there's also a kicker which can launch the ball very, very quickly, and sometimes a uh, chipper, which can cause the, um, can kick the ball over other robots, and you get a, a 3D uh, action that way. While the small-sized robots share many of the same core features and requirements, each team's design is unique. Uh, the rule said you have to be a block, and you have the standard pattern on top of the robot, so if you take a look in the field, you will see everything is uh, it is the same, but actually inside it's totally different. We all build them on our own. There are a lot of common things that many teams do similarly. A lot of teams use the same types of motors and the same types of solenoids roughly. Um, but 
everyone designs their own. The first generation is when the league start, they don't know how to make the mechanic, so that is the mechanic era. And after that, when we uh, refine how to design the mechanic, everybody go to the same direction. And right now we in the second generation. The second generation is how to control it precisely. And after that, I think uh, the second generation will be end soon. We move to the next one. It's a real AI, dynamic AI operation. One thing that it's important to clarify is that RoboCup indeed started as a robot soccer dream. And we started with this fantastic goal of by 2050 to beat the World Cup human team. So that's really how it started. I think everybody should join the RoboCup and just try it. So you, you will find a lot of good friends and you will discover a whole new world that you never know is already existed.